Oh, little Kim. I know you send me on the video, true. I know you hear me on the video, true. But you still don't pay me no attention. Listening to what your girlfriend's mentioned. He's a slut. He's a hoe. He's a freak. Got a different nigga every day of the week. Hey. Y'all, it is a hot mess. It's a hot mess like this wig child. It's a hot mess. <laughs> but I don't know, y'all. Y'all. I have been packing. No, I'm not packing. I just got done making most of the products. The majority of the products are made. Um, there's like one, like if you bought the spiritual bath, the per bath, it's not going to be made because you're going to have to refrigerate her. So that will not be made. Anybody who ordered her with the bath set, that's going to be sh shipped off last because we have to make it, put it in there, and then send it off. I don't think I'll be sending her to Canada or Europe, the bath. Um, yes, hello, everyone. Good morning. These ghetto-ass Project Pack nails. The reason why I have on shades, y'all, it sounds crazy, is actually because there's a lot of dust in here from like making products and it actually flies in my eyes and I can't deal with it. So I literally wear shades in here, even though we're cleaning and we're vacuuming all the time. It's still from making jingle bell, jingle bell, give me your money. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. So it's just very like it's very windows are still open but it's like the stuff is going in my eyes so i gotta keep my shades on it's not for any like weird reason um like um so y'all i know it's real early i'm normally not on that early and if you guys want to like and thumbs up the video you know um Jingle bells, Batman spells, give me all your money. Oh, what fun it is to spend every single penny. E. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we start packing. And then we start shipping. So for the next two weeks, it's packing and shipping, packing and shipping. So um, we said six weeks to ship. So if you ordered on Black Friday... If there is any type of setback, it would be it would run into seven weeks. But the majority of the stuff is done, um, except for those baths and stuff. Um, so just know that I want to show you guys an example. Um, so here here's binded. So binded has reptile in it. It has snake skin. Um, and I'm not going to say what type of snake or what type of breed or what type of age because people love to steal your ideas. It's literally snake oil. Um, but it's snake oil. I know you guys are probably like, what's in it? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Um, I can't tell you. So, yes, there is. You're dealing with serpent energy. Um, you're dealing with deities that are of water, <laughs> that are of land, that glide on their stomachs. So, this is not something that is to be used. You can wear it on your skin if you want, it's dried snake skin. You know what I'm saying? So you can wear it on you. It's up to you. But this is real snake skin. It came from a snake, from a certain type of snake. And I actually know the owner. So this snake is very interesting. It has a very interesting. Um, and so I'm just putting it out there. Be very careful. A lot of people are like, where's the herbs? Well, I have my own technique. <laughs> I've actually found a way of making oils now without having 
to put the herbs actually in there. So my style is going to change. Um, so you'll be seeing less and less herbs in your oil because I found another way to do it. So yeah. So yeah, guys. And of course, we still have sweetest fruit. But bind it is not a joke. So don't play with it. Don't play with it. I'm I'm just here to give you witchcraft on the plate. Okay, guys. So I just want to say something. When I say niggas, people think I'm talking about black men. No, I'm not talking about black men. I'm actually speaking about white men, Asian men, Spanish men, biracial men, racially ambiguous. I don't care. Hawaiian men, Chinese men. A nigga is a nigga. A nigga lacks emotional intelligence. A nigga lacks empathy, sympathy, how to be a husband. The only thing they know is, is the lower self. It's fucking, sucking, making babies, and then trying to control you and to manipulate you into saying. That is what I mean by, by a nigga. Now, if we're speaking about women and women within the black community, I would say that makes up about 70 to 80% of our men, meaning that leaves you with probably 30% so, or 20% of a de of decent men out there who are not niggas. Cardi B married a whole nigga. Yeah. Cardi B married a nigga. Um, he will never be anyone's husband. He for the streets. That's why I don't understand why Jenny Mai and Jenny Mai and that dude, why she thought a whole street nigga could be her husband. I think what Angela Simmons has going on with Yo Gotti I think that that's really cute, but he's still a street nigga. So even if she marries, he's just a cleaned up street nigga. That mentality does not die. It dwells within their testicles. It's too, it's too bred in them because some women are not queens. Some women are chambermaids. Some women are not queens. Some women are farm farm laborers. Everybody, every woman has the potential to be a queen, but all women are not queens. I don't call all women queen. Queen, no, she's a bed a bed chambermaid. She's not a queen. No, she's part of the court, but she ain't a queen. She ain't even a princess. She's not a duchess. She's not an empress. She doesn't think too highly of herself to even call herself those type of things yet. Her self-worth is low. Her self-esteem is low. Y'all, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. My self-worth is not low and my self-esteem is not low. That's why these niggas can't play in my face. And I'm not desperate. And I'm not, I'm not lonely. Men prey on women who are seeking companionship and willing to do anything and anybody to get it. When you're not desperate, they don't like you. When you're not desperate, they call you the cat lady. They say, that's why you don't have a man. I, I, my worth is not about having a man. Because do you know how many fine, fit, and feminine women call me and they're still getting dragged?
fine fit and feminine and still getting dragged. Exotic, Cardi B's, the Nicki Minaj's, the Melissa Ford's, still getting dragged. Because you know what the real problem is? The manosphere is basically a whole bunch of men who don't like women. They just don't like you. They like you for sex and a meal, but they don't like women. They don't care if you're fine, fit, and feminine. They're always going to find... They just want you to say, look, I'm a man. And because I'm a man, simply because I have two testicles, you must submit to me. Just like my tired ass beat up mother submit to her no good ass men because a lot of them don't have the same daddies. They're bro brothers and sisters, but don't have the same daddies. What makes you a princess, bitch? My mom worked three to five jobs. She's on a wheelchair right now. Why should you get better treatment when my own mother and my own sisters never got better treatment? Who the fuck you think you are? The manosphere does not like you. They just don't like feminine energy. And that's why I create shit like this. But, okay. So 70 to 80% of these men ain't coming with anything serious anyways. I might as well get some something out of it. Shit, I'm, 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 I might as well get something out of you. These products are great to use on men who seek only sexual gratification and to use you. Use them before they use you. <laughs> but me as a priestess, I choose not to do nothing. If I meet a nigga, a fuck nigga, whatever I meet, I have been learning that it's best to don't argue with the masculine. Walk away, sis. Grab your purse. It was nice meeting you. Grab your purse. Stand up. Walk away. Don't argue. Don't argue with these men. Don't argue with these men. Okay? You wish them the best and get away from them. Because this has been a problem that they have been carrying since they came out of their mother's wombs their environment, how they were raised, being around other men, not having strong male figures, not being held accountable, being catered to as they ran through women. You cannot change this behavior. Most men aren't even willing to see a therapist. Girl, sir, that's what Cardi B failed to do because we're about to go into the Cardi B reading. She failed to say, well, it was fun fucking you. It was fun getting some shine off of you while the Amigos was popping. She should have grabbed her purse and gone the fuck about her business. That is all you can do. You cannot change these men. You cannot love them to death. You cannot build a bear them. You literally have to dodge them like bullets. And sadly, within the black community, there's a lot of them. Meaning 70 to 80% of the men you're dealing with ain't shit to begin with. Meaning that you're going to spend a lot of time alone, but not lonely. Go do you while you're dating and looking for a man who's a better fit. That's the best advice 
I can tell you, 70 to 80% of these men ain't shit. So you got to really date. You got to set boundaries. And you cannot change these men. They are broken. They have to change themselves. These men are literally out to suck the blood and the life out of you. Cardi B allowed Offset to suck the fucking life out of her because she thought she could take a nigga from off the fucking streets. Like how she took herself off that stripper pole and changed her life because she was driven and motivated. Because that feminine loves luxury. That feminine loves nice smells, nice wigs, nice everything, and we're willing to work for it. He doesn't have the same drive that you do. He's a nigga. He's a nigga. You try to take a whole nigga and try to turn it into a husband. You cannot turn 70 to 80% of these men into husbands. You got to grab your purse. What do you say? Me, myself, and I. That's what I, what, 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 is, what is it? That's what I got in the end. That's what I found out. And there ain't no need to cry. Y'all, you know a lot of my relatives' husbands don't like me. Um, They don't like me. Because I'm their worst nightmare. I cannot be manipulated emotionally. When a man meets a woman, a woman that has clear boundaries, has no husband, has no kids, they say we're crazy because we're not willing to put up with being used sexually, being abused sexually, being abused mentally. We would rather spend our money on trips, poodles, and cats, material things, and traveling, therapy, and self-improvement than allowing a man to break us down just so we can say we have a man. The men in my family who are married to my cousins, they know not to fuck with me. They also know I'm a witch, so I really don't give a fuck. Once you... Stop giving a fuck and you set your boundaries and you walk away from 70 to 80% of these men. Men are so trifling now. They, they tell you who they are. Offset told Cardi B who he was. And from my understanding, he was raised in the suburbs. He was raised in the suburbs. I know he had his mom. I don't know about his dad. But again, he was still around niggas. So, oh yes, boo. I'm out, I'm out and about. I'm out and about. Why not? I'm not ugly. You know, I'm out and about. And you can have your boundaries, but when a man shows you who he is, On the first date, the second date, the third date, the fourth. All right, now it was it was nice. It was nice. Y'all hang around. I've seen, I've heard with my own ears. I've been out in public where I have heard. Men say the most outrageous things to women on a date or in a group setting. And you know what most women do? They laugh. Y'all laugh. Pygmishas. I don't even think it's just pygmishas. Y'all be like, ha, 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 ha. He just told you how he was going to treat you. He literally.
He literally told you by telling you a joke, I'm going to treat you like shit. Rick Ross, Rick Ross has a new, a new light skin girl, a new mulattress. He has a new girl, a new racially ambiguous girl. This girl is like, y'all are just hating. Y'all are just blah, blah, blah. Y'all don't know when a good thing. I said, girl, shut up and take the gifts and run. Rick Ross is a whole nigga. You mean to tell me you had three kids? And I think this woman lives in Atlanta. Three kids. Three. Not one. Not two. Not three. Three. I think three kids. Three. And he did not marry her. Played family with this woman like it was connect the dots. Threw that hoe on the side of the road with her three kids, child. She out here selling bodycon dresses and networking to be on a reality show. Also, there is this thing going on where all of a sudden a lot of black women think white men are our saviors. I'm I'm gonna get some pushback. But I'm with white men are not y'all saviors. White people date better. A white man doesn't think you need to get down and suck his dick because he bought you a T-bone steak. They have better dating etiquette. They understand the dating game. They understand that you don't owe them shit. While a nigga, the 70 to 80 percent of the, the men in our community think that they bought you some fucking French fries and a happy meal, and now you gotta suck these toes. I will say that white men are more emotionally intelligent. They are. They're more emotionally intelligent. So, yeah, and they know how to date better. But let me tell you something. A white man will still mistreat you. A white man will still throw you under the motherfucking bus. Especially when you go to court, that white card comes out real quick. For custody, for child support, and for the separation of assets, that white card comes out real quick. Unknown caller. I'm telling you, white people date better and white people have better emotional intelligence. But look at Tamar. I had to go get my man from that crackhead. So you mean to tell me your white man went on a date with a certified crack pipe lover who is also a well-known industry escort like Tommy, who is mentally blown, emotionally blown out, he chose the trashiest, the trashiest of women to get his lick back because he's trying to get his lick back, lick back, because he's trying to get his, he's trying to hurt your fucking feelings. A whole fucking prostitute whore crackhead. And she said in his middle class house, a crackhead is throwing insults. A crackhead that barely has any emotional connection to her child or her grandchildren. You, this white man allowed a crackhead into his life. And he's white.
So yes, dating white men is a more pleasant experience. It is more pleasant. It's more chivalrous. Even dating in Indian men, even dating, but at the end of the day, a nigga's a nigga. But they say the longest lasting interracial relationships is black women with white men. So maybe there is something there. I, at this point, I'm telling all women, especially black women, date whoever the fuck you want to date. Because I don't care if you date Punjabi, who makes curry chicken. If 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 Punjabi is a de- is a decent man and he's a provider and he's doing what he needs to do, then you need to ring a ring a ding ding and start eating curry chicken and tikka 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 me. You need to get with it. Learn how to make some curry, girl. Learn how to steam some jasmine rice. Learn how to make some masala. If he's Mexican, learn how to cook him up some good burritos, some chalupas. At this point, date whoever you want. I used to be very pro-black until I realized uh, 70 to 80% of these black men are damaged. So you may want to start looking out. Cardi B thought she could turn a 70, 80% into a, a, a 20, 30% girl. These white men are not your saviors. Okay? And these 70, 80% ass niggas, ain't, you, you can't turn it into a husband. These men don't care if you're fine, fit, and feminine. They just don't like women. They don't like that you're not their mother with no edges, big crusty feet, work two, three jobs, let niggas run through them, let their husbands drag them. You are not their mothers. You're not their aunts. They don't know how to deal with you. You go to therapy. You know how to say big words. You get pat smears. You've been to Rome. You've been to Italy. You've been to Greece. They don't know what to do with you. Their mother never went to Rome. She went to the STD clinic. Okay. His mother never did nothing but just work like a Hebrew slave. Treat her daughter like shit and turn her son into her husband. I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it. You're all your mother knows is baby daddies and poverty. And so. And I've noticed sometimes men come on my YouTube and they come on my Instagram and they call me fat and ugly, which I know I'm not ugly. So I know that's a lot. But I'll be like, dude, I go on their pages and I'm like, but you're not attractive. So if you look like, and then they got the nerve to post up their dry wig wearing tired ass looking mamas. Bitch, I'm ugly? Have you looked at your mother? Oh, country-fied looking asshole. Tired asshole. Pussy tired, lips tired, mouth tired. Everything about your mother screams tired. But I'm ugly? Talk about some I'm ugly and that's why I don't have a man. But I go, oh, you're masculine. That's why you don't have a man. But I go on your page. Your mom has on a 12 years of slave wig. And her feet are a size 13. From carrying your no good ass. Gremlin wigs, just tired. But you got, these are the same men 
I believe a man, I believe a man who serves a purpose would never go on blogs and Instagram and Facebook to argue with grown ass women. And then when you go on their page, they're not attractive or they wreak poverty. They street niggas. They out here selling $2 oils. They, they in the recording studio wearing old pimp outfits. Or they're gay or their penises look small. Um, it's, it's just, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It's, it's, but you on my page calling me ugly. But when I go on your page, but your daughter's not cute. Your daughter's, you're calling me ugly, but have you looked at your daughter? Uh, Y'all, I'm savage. I, I told a man one time, you calling me ugly, but your daughter is one pie away from, from, from a diabetic drip? Are you fucking serious? But now, daughter average, mama, mama's ugly, wife looks tired, but they're on, I'm savage, y'all. Growing up Haitian, I'm savage. He, there's nothing nobody has ever said to me. There's nothing that you can say to me to hurt my feelings that I don't know about myself because I'm Haitian. We're savage. I know I need to get my teeth fixed, bitch. I know I need to keep losing weight, bitch. I know my wigs be fucked up sometimes, bitch. I know I have a fat neck, bitch. I know I'm slightly cockeyed, bitch. There's nothing you can say about me that I don't know. I know sometimes I walk out the house looking busted, bitch. My wig be on sideways, ho. Ain't shit. My right leg slightly leans to the, and I wobble when I walk sometimes, bitch. But nobody's perfect. That's the beauty of life is your imperfections. Your imperfections are beautiful, actually. It's what makes you, it what actually helps you stand out. But you mean to tell me that you came on my page and called me ugly and you're still using a Samsung Galaxy from 2019 and everybody plus your kids, plus your mama, plus your wife is ugly. It just, it just makes no sense. You don't even have an iPhone. I can't fuck with you unless you got that new Samsung. That new Samsung is savage. But you talking so much shit and all of your videos are moving slow and and they're glossy and hazy <laughs> ladies 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 walk away keep dating until you meet a decent person if there are no good men in your area, date outside of your area, travel, live your life. 70 to 80% of these men are no good. These men who, who are involved in these gender wars, arguing with women, these fucking crazy ass podcasts, would you suck a nigga's toe? I don't know. That's none of my business. Everything is a subject. Everything... Everything is a subject. Would you, what would it, everything is a topic. So you're going to have to kiss a lot of frogs. Don't fuck them. Because men date for sex. So don't fuck them. Go on a few dates, see how he is, and, and keep dating other people. Don't argue with these men. Do not argue with these men. You cannot change them. Do not try to love them to death. Do not try to argue them down. Walk away. Because a lot of you bitches don't have edges. Walk away. Walk away. That's what I've had to learn. You don't have to explain yourself. Block them. They, they will argue with you because they were raised in the feminine. Don't say nothing to these men. Walk away. Don't even engage. With, walk away. Because they're set in your ways and you're set in theirs. Walk away. 
That's what Cardi B should have done, is walked away. Even after the birth of the first child, her first daughter, she should have walked away. So y'all, this has been, let's go straight. And I just know that like, Nicki Minaj is like subliminally, what's the word, subliminal, I can't remember, attacking Nicki Minaj, sis, sis, you should be the last to make comments on anybody's love, you literally married a project ghetto, city trans wearing sewer rat ass nigga. You went to the trenches to find a man. You cannot comment on nobody's marriage. You cannot. They put that nigga under house arrest when he went off after offset. Your address is public record because he's a sex of. Sis, sit this one down. Don't say nothing. If I know my man is fucked up, I'm not going to say nothing, sis. You went into what is below the gutter? Somebody, a cesspool? You went into a cesspool and pulled a man, a rat, out of a fucking cesspool. You can, this man bucked up on her husband and he got put under house. Since he, he don't even have freedom of movement. And you talking about another woman's fucked up husband when your husband is just as fucked up as off, offset. Sis, stay out of this one because I feel a good old dragon coming about your husband because the public is savage. The public is savage that they will drag you and your husband. Worry about your new album and go about your businesses because you, 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 especially Akbar, girl, Akbar, sis, you're short bus. Akbar, you are short bus. You need to worry about wearing your helmet and catching that bus. You couldn't keep a man, even if it was a roach trap, bitch. You cannot trap anything. She rides a short bus and wears a helmet. Leave, leave stay out of this because you'll never have a husband. You're just too crazy. So it, it, leave it alone, sis. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Retarded people. And people who got fucked up husbands need to stay out of this. That's all I have to say. Akbar is beyond retarded. I don't think, I think she needs like electro shock treatments, girl. She's, she's gone. She's gone, girl. Woo! Tetla Ale. Tetla. And Haitian, Tetli Babon, her head is not good. Tetla, boy, Tetla, she's crazy. Like you, you can't talk about nobody's husband when you fucking the Mucinex monster. Don't nobody, bitch, you're fucking the lowest of the low. We don't want to hear it. Girl, the problem is, did the 16-year-old victim want to get fucked? That's the question. She said, no, I did not want to get fucked. So it's still considered rape. It's not the age. It's the act. You can't force your dick inside of somebody's pussy hole. It's called rape. You can't force your dick inside of somebody's mouth. It's called assault. You can't force your dick inside of somebody's booty hole. It's called sodomized. Now y'all are saying, oh, he wasn't 16. The man is gutter trash. 
He comes from gutter trash, his mother's trash, his father's trash. He is nothing but waste. And if you cannot see that, I don't know if you're born in the projects, raised in the projects, and those are the type of men you're used to, but the men like him are 70 to 80% of the men who are no good within our community. These are the niggas who hang around on the corner at 40. These are the niggas who are 37 and still in the fucking studio. That's not a man, sis. That's a nigga. Got a whole bunch of fucking kids with numerous. That's a nigga. Some of y'all think manhood is project patch. Stay at your mammy's house and keep a smart mouth. Sip it on some scissor. Scissor. That's nigga shit. Y'all think future is a man. That's nigga shit. Niggas. Somebody said a predator is a predator. Y'all, if your daddy was a nigga on the corner of the street, you probably going to think Beyonce. Um, let's talk about Jay-Z. You're correct. You're right. Jay-Z took himself out of the gutter. He educated himself. He learned about economics. He went and he bettered himself. Beyonce did not drive to the lowest projects in Queens and picked up a Jay-Z. Big difference. Beyonce did not say, oh, let me put on my $10,000 Chanel outfit and go drive into a neighborhood where rent is either free or $10 a month and picked up a whole sewer rack. And say, oh, this is Jay-Z, but he has potential. Jay-Z had already fixed his life. Like how Offset couldn't even argue with Nicki Minaj's husband because the nigga don't even take care of himself. Offset is a millionaire. He a nigga who stood on his own two feet and made his own motherfucking money. But you got a man in diapers arguing with me. And then his parole officer puts him on house arrest like a baby that he is. Beyonce did not put on her Balenciagas and her red bottoms and walk into the biggest hood in Queens and pick a husband. Why? Because she knew her worth. Why? Because her father is a nigga, but he's a strategic money-made nigga. So she went and got a nigga with money who actually put in the fucking work. Some of the biggest drug dealers have tried to become rappers. They're either dead, in jail, or fucking crackheads. So, so don't come here and tell me that shit. That shit is fucking... Beyond reasonable. Well, y'all don't say anything about Jay-Z. No, we don't, because he's a made nigga. Period. While be while Nicki Minaj's husband is a sewer rat that wears Tim's and City Trans. Talk about some she was 16, he was 16. A 16-year-old can still rape you. This shit is wild. This shit is so wild to me. Like, he really did assault her. Like, and y'all are still the defending the lowest of the low of society. These men are the lowest of the low of society. Jay-Z pulled himself out of that. He pulled his mother out of it, too. And he didn't have to fuck no bitch to get it. He stood on his two testicles and worked and climbed up that motherfucker. I don't respect no nigga who gotta live off of a woman's Section A voucher. You a grown ass man living in Beverly Hills and you don't even know how to learn another job set. I don't care if he served 20 years. 
he's still a fucking predator. Predators don't stop being predators after jail time. It's in their blood. They're animals that they, they really need to die. But because society doesn't believe in shooting people who are killing them and getting rid of them, we're stuck with them. But they really need to be put in a corner and blown in the back of the head. I said what I said. Same people who will rape your daughter, molest your children, molest your sons. They need to be taken out and shot in the back of the head. There is no reform. Nikki Minaj's husband is a menace to society. He needs to be taken out. I don't care if you're a predator, take you out. I don't care if you're worth a trillion dollars. I don't care if it's Elon Musk, take him the fuck out. If it's a predator raping and doing crap, take him out. Cause they're animalistic minded. It will never change. I hate predators. I hate them. How about some making fun of somebody else's husband, but your husband is a whole infested sewer rat. It just don't make no sense. And y'all stop comparing money. A predator is a predator. I, I, a predator is a predator. For what Diddy did to Cassie, he should be dead. Her father sh should have walked in there and shot that nigga straight through the motherfucking head. But he, but he didn't. Because he bought her whole family out. And Half of these dudes on the corner can't even read and write, child. And you sitting here having babies with them. They can't. They don't even have the focus to sit through a GED class, but, but they got the focus to fuck numerous women. I told one of my cousins, I said, you're so dumb that you have enough time to fuck and make babies, but you can literally not sit still in a fucking GED class. Oh, he, he, never, he never spoke to me again. He, he's another petty. He's, he's one of them Nicki Minaj husband type of niggas. You can fuck, but you can't read. Okay, child. It's better to be alone than to deal with a man who cannot sit still in a GED class. But you out here making babies with them. Crazy. Not only that, oh, Nicki Minaj's brother. Isn't he in jail for sexing his, his goddaughter, his, his stepdaughter? There's, there's a pattern in her where she thinks it's okay for men to be sexual predators. She, she's not as pro-female as you think. So she's, Mm, that's very funny. She she doesn't mind being around predators. That's I just thought about it. I'm like her brother's in jail for sexing a 12 year old or something. And something too about her dad. She comes from that lineage. She's very forgiving of it. It's some weird old shit, y'all. She's weird, yo. When it comes to men, she's weird. But Nikki looks feminine, but she's masculine. So she could never date Nas. Nas? No. Not Nas. No. Nas is a whole nigga. Nas is a whole nigga.
Nas is a whole nigga. He is. He's a whole nigga. If y'all are enjoying my live, Sabri82 is my cash app. It's a picture of a big ass moth, a black moth. If you're enjoying the live, I don't like super chats. I don't care about that shit. Hit me up on my cash app. Sabri82. Because y'all, I got more spiritual supplies to buy. This ain't even for me, bitch. This is to buy more supplies. More this, more that. I need some luxury money, child. <laughs> I'm like, this is money for supplies. So if you're enjoying it, hit up my cash app, Sabri82. Hold on. Let me see. I, I think I would respect Petty more if he at least had a fashion line at City Trans or something, child. Like, I could tolerate it just for one second. Okay, y'all. So let me see. Okay, what was the final straw for Cardi B? Why did she say, okay, nigga, I'm done, bye. Oh, y'all, wow, Cardi B, baby, the cheating and the heartbreak. She was tired, y'all. I was your lover and your secretary. Working every day up. Look, I got the shit. I got the shit. I got the shit. Look, 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 look. I was your lover. Ah, oh, I did it, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was your lover and your secretary. Working every day. I got the bob, and at the time when no one else was there, helping you get on your feet. Eleven years, I sacrificed. And you could leave me at a drop of a dime. Follow my. Look, the wig worked. The wig did the whole scene. I even had the shape. I did the whole scene, y'all. Bless my cash app. Thank you. Bless my cash app. Sabri82 is pinned at the top of the comments, bitch. I just gave y'all a hope. Y'all, she's tired. And it's, she's like, no. She's tired, y'all. She's had enough. Enough heartbreak. She's walking the fuck away, y'all. She said too many. I'm tired, child. She said her heart is literally broken. Her heart is literally broken. But Cardi. You a stripper hoe. You a stripper hoe. You're a savage. Most strippers are savages. You should have known the game. You're a savage, sis. You're a savage. You used to drug niggas and take money out of their fucking world. <laughs> Bitch, how did a savage turn into a softie? She's like, didn't I tell you I was a savage? Most strippers are savages. So... You mean to tell me you went from being a savage to a softy? She feels like, mm -mm. y'all, when I'm telling you these 70 to 80% of the male population will drain you, they will drain you. This woman, when I'm telling you the... Seventy to eighty percent will not do you right, sis. And she married right into that seventy, eighty percent. She is. She's going through it, y'all. You don't need to see the video. I actually turned cars on it on the day that she announced it. Spirit don't lie. Y'all have seen this on my YouTube many times where I say something and the card literally comes out. This is 
the second card that came out when I threw it on my own, she is literally in heartbreak. But you can't trust a nigga. She is minding her business. Minding her business. Minding her business. She she is like, I'm about to take a break. Um, I also saw where um 2024 may not be the best year for her to release her album. She's literally bag lady. If you were on my Instagram live, I was like, bag lady, you gonna miss your bus. You can't hurry up because you got too much stuff. I guess no one told you. So she's reflecting a lot about... Um, why y'all arguing about her being Dominican? Look, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm Haitian and I don't fuck with too many Dominicans. Um, it's too colorist. Um, I've been on the island. Most of them look like me. Yes, some of them may have hair like this, but their face and their features look like me. They look like me. And there's tons of Haitians there. That's why I don't fuck with, what's her name? Lyra La Negra. What's her name? Lyra. Her father looked like a Haitian with a jury curl. Obviously, one half of her whole family came from the other side of the whole fucking island. What is what is her name? Amira La Negra, a whole half Haitian woman. Her mother is Dominican. Her mother does have that black Dominican aesthetics, but her father is a whole Haitian driving a cab in New York with a fucking jury curl. But she's quick and her and J Jesse Wu. Jesse, I don't even like Jesse Wu, and she's Haitian, but Jesse Wu knows bitch, you Haitian. You Haitian with them ugly ass Afro wigs and green contacts. You're Haitian. I don't really go around Dominicans. It's too much colorism. It's too much arikikikiki, arikikiki that. It's too much ignoring your West African lineage, but honoring your Spaniard slave lineage. It's It doesn't, even the form of voodoo there is more arikikikiki, arikikikika. And it's, I don't do it. I don't go around them. I don't have any problems with being dark skinned and having nappy hair. They used to love my mother and my aunt because they're lighter skinned Haitians. So they always had compliments. But once they saw my nigga looking ass, they're like, oh. Okay, like, I am not arikikikiki, arikikikita. So I don't, I love Spanish people. I have no problems with Spanish people, but I don't fuck with most Dominicans. Now, if they look like me and they're not colorist, I fucks with you. I don't fuck with a lot of Cubans. Unless they look like me, are they cool as fuck? Some Cubans are cool, cool as fuck, no matter what color. But some are very colorist. But when you go to Cuba, they look like me. They look like us. And they can't get papers. It's only the white Cubans who are in Cuba. But they look like us. They look like us. The people on the island look like us and they can't come here to the United States. Only the European Cubans are coming to the United States. But 
but I don't deal with Dominicans. It's too much hatred of West African blood. And I just don't deal with it. If you're not proud to, to be nappy headed and coming from the coast of West Africa, I don't fuck with you. Especially when you don't know where that big ass came from, that big round ass, it came from us, sis. So I just stay away. Her daddy, a whole Haitian with a jury curl, driving a cab, but she's not Haitian. And La Negra practices Santeria when her real religion is actually Haitian voodoo. So she's not even in the right religion. Her father's Haitian, sis. Haitian voodoo is your religion. She's not even practicing. Big Oshun statues in her house. I know, because I know people who've been in there. Big Oshun statues in her house, sis. No Fuera statues, though. Practicing the wrong religion because she hates blackness. She hates Haitians. She hates niggas. Big ass Oshun Shango. That's not even her lineage. Like, I've been around Spanish people. Oh, I love Oya. Oya is black as fuck. Black like this. But don't like black people, especially... Cuban men are actually more tolerant of dark-skinned women. It's the women who hate us. The women hate us. They took, they took Oshun, who's black as this, and turned her into a Spanish woman. How, how are you worshiping black deities but don't like black people? That's why I stay away. I stay away. I, I only fuck with Cubans, Puerto Ricans, and Dominicans who are not colorist. I literally, with my eyeballs, I do not find, I do not believe that people who have closer European features are more attractive than dark-skinned people. I just don't. To me, it's Europe, it's European shit. The closer you are to European, you're you're turning into to a white person. That is not my beauty aesthetics. My beauty aesthetics is for Nigerian, Cameroon, Congo, Benin. That's where my ancestors came from. That is my beauty aesthetics. My beauty aesthetics is not France. Yes, I'm wearing a wig, bitch, because I love me a wig. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I love me a wig. But that's not my... Why would my beauty aesthetics be a light-skinned person? I'm not light-skinned. I don't think, I don't think that, um, what's her name? Who had, who had a baby with the, the baby? What's her name? The baby? Like, what's her name? Danny Lee, Danny Lay, or you cannot compare Danny Lay to Naomi Campbell. Those are two completely different cultural beauty standards. Now you can say, oh, oh, um, you can turn around and tell me, oh, Naomi Campbell's prettier than you, because that's our standard for dark skin. But you cannot tell me that Danny Lee is prettier than me. No, she's not. We're not even in the same aesthetics. You can compare Holly Berry to Danny Lee. So she's mixed, but you cannot come. You cannot compare a black woman to the aesthetics of a mixed woman. How are you going to compare my aesthetics to a woman whose half her bloodline is white? That's crazy. You need to compare me to Nigerians. You need to compare me to Congo. You need to compare me to where my people came from. I'm not from France, nigga. I'm not from Spain, nigga. I'm not from Italy, nigga. 
Danny, and really, I hate to say this, Naomi Campbell, I agree, mops the floor with Danny Lay. Danny Lay compared to Naomi Campbell, just the facial structure alone, blow. Danny Lay could, Danny Lay could never. She doesn't even have the bone structure to do it. Models have a certain bone structure. Danny Lay doesn't have it. But in some people's eyes, Danny Lay is prettier than Naomi Campbell. Where? I don't know. Because she's a darker skinned woman. That's how most Spanish people think. Because Danny Lay's lighter, she's prettier than Naomi Campbell, child. And that makes absolutely no sense, girl. It makes no sense. I understand Cardi B, but because she's a colorist, I would never fuck with her on that level. You see, most Spanish women who are colorists, they will marry a nigga. They will marry a dark-skinned man. And that dark-skinned man will work 16 jobs and take care of them. I, with my own eyes. <laughs> with my own eyes. Cardi B and her whole family are colorists. Don't ever get that twisted. But they will marry a nigga. And have kids with a nigga. But she'll still think your black ass is ugly. And don't let the kids come out and look like the daddy. Now she's really upset. Mm -mm. So... Girl, Cardi is, is, girl, I don't even want to turn into Cardi. I'm not even going to save this live, child, because it was a waste of time. It, girl, the sneakiness, the overspending, traveling to do random shit. Not commit. Okay, y'all. It... You married a nigga, sis. I I don't I I don't know what you thought. I want to ask a question, but I'm going to the dead. What made Cardi B think? That she could take a man who represents 70 to 80% of the black community. Why did she think she could change this nigga? I guess she thought Offset was going to put her on a pedestal because of her skin color. She thought her putty was better. The, the dead. The dead. The mortis. The dead. The dead. Why did Cardi B... Why did Cardi B... Why did some of y'all are saying it's because she was Spanish, a lighter skinned, racially ambiguous woman. And you y'all y'all are saying in the comments, if you like this cash at me, y'all send me a cash app. It's pinned to the comments. <laughs> that it. So y'all are telling me that y'all think it's because she likes skin. That walk wasn't walking. I actually don't think, like, Nikki is a colorist. 
she doesn't give me that. Mm -mm. I've never gotten that off of her. She just so happened to come from two lighter skinned people. I don't, she never gave that. No, no, I don't think so either. She had money. Like Nikki, Nikki's not a colorist at all. Like she, she, she thinks a dark skinned woman can be just as pretty as a light skinned woman. She just, one thing I'll tell you spiritually about Nikki, Nikki doesn't like women who don't keep up with themselves. Like Nikki will never walk out the house looking crazy. She feels like a woman has to always keep up with herself. Like, like, yeah, you may fall, but get up, put that good wig on your makeup. That is something I do love about, about Nikki. Even when you're going through hell, bitch, look good. Look good. Y'all notice there's things I love about Nikki Minaj, but there's things I hate about her too. She does have some good aspects. So I'm not completely here to bash her, but overall, she's too much in her ego. Why are you arguing over numbers and starting petty fights? That's what stops you from your legacy. So no, it's not about skin color. It's how good you look, bitch. Are you taking care of yourself? My mom is the same way. My mom is like, your husband could have punched you in both of your faces. You're getting cheated on, bitch. Put on them four-inch heels. Put on your makeup and your good wig. Put on your good perfume. And present yourself accordingly to the world. That's how Nikki thinks. I've done readings on it. That's her mindset. I agree. I agree so, so, Belle. I agree. Why did Nikki think, come on, dead, come on, Mortis, Mortis, expose it? Why did, no, why did Cardi think that she could change this man? Oh, 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 oh. Cardi was looking for a husband. The dead are saying Cardi was looking for a husband. She was looking for her emperor. So this is already telling me, psychologically speaking, her father was either not in her life or something was not already there. A lack. I don't know too much about her dad. I know her dad's around, but I don't know too much. Oh, wow. She put down what she wanted, the queen of swords. No, this is how it's going to be. This is what I want. This is what I want. Oh, wow. No, nigga. No, no, the Queen of Swords said, I want a family. If you fucking this pussy, this pleasure palace, if you fucking this pleasure palace, going into my pink palace, you need to be an emperor. She said, you cannot be with me unless you want to marry me. She said, I may be a hoe. I may be a stripper. But I am a Latina woman and I am still family oriented. Guantalamea, Lajia, Guantalamea, no me ames. I am still a Spanish woman. You will take me out of my hodum. You will marry me. You will no me ames me. And you will make me into a housewife. She, they're, they're, no, no pleasure pussy hole until, no, no. There was no, uh, <laughs> I am a Latina. 
I may be a hoe, but you gonna marry me. She left no other option. Yo, Cardi B off the rip. I don't know what nigga this is. It could have been Offset, whoever. Tory Lanez, whoever. You're going to marry me. You're going to take me out of the whole game. Nobody bought the album, sis. Like, come on now. Offset without the, amig the uh, Amigos or Cardi B, there's nothing there. But him being a street ass hoe ass nigga. Because Latina women, especially in the Bronx, marriage is everything. A lot of young girls get married very young. That's just part of their culture. That's just part of their culture. They're very family oriented. They could be sucking 20 dicks and walk back into the house. But because they cook and they clean, they're going to expect that ring. This is actually very cultural. That's part of their culture. They marry young and start having kids young. She is not here for the games. Oh, wow. She gave the emperor a choice. He actually had a choice. You either fuck with me and you marry me. He had a choice. Actually, I said you had a choice. But Cardi B was that girl. Cardi B was that moment. Bodak Yellow stayed on the charts for two years. You couldn't walk away. Like, she was that girl. She was. She was that Chanel number five. She was. He couldn't, he had a choice. He actually did. Readings are so crazy. They really do reveal. He had a choice. But he was conflicted about his choice. Girl, I agree. Some Dominicans are not like that. I agree. No, I agree. Portals plus five zero nine three six three four one. I agree. I agree. Not all are like that. I agree, but a lot are. It's just like a lot of Haitians are CNAs. And work in nursing homes. <laughs> a lot of Haitians are registered nurses <laughs> and work in the hospital. Not all, but a large percentage. Not all Dominican women seek to marry young and have children young, but a lot. Most Dominican chicks I knew, they was hoes, girl. They was out and about. Out and about. While the Haitian girls were trying to hide our hoeing. <laughs> the Dominican girls were like, they weren't even hiding it. Like, unless they're very Catholic, they would try to hide it. But our Haitian parents, no. But we were doing it behind their back. The Spanish girls are like, I'm going to wear this two-piece and be out and about. But let us get caught in a two-piece. Our parents will beat our ass. We did things behind. They did things in the front. We were too scared. Um, He had a choice. He had a, he, he was impressed by the money. Y'all, okay. I, I, I 
I don't even feel, dude, you had a choice. You, you had a choice, dude. Like, like, I don't even feel, like, like, we, we already, everybody's intuitive, but everybody's not psychic. I'm intuitive. You're intuitive. Even a dog walking down the street is intuitive. Intuition is God's voice, but that, that doesn't mean you're psychic, but we're all intuitive. Everybody, Drita LaViva is intuitive. So So Bell is intuitive. CC Block is intuitive. That's God's voice, but that's his connection to the divine. We are all intuitive. We're all intuitive, but we are all not psychic. We cannot all predict the Ukraine war like I did. We can all, all predict that abortion is going to be banned in 2020. No. You see what I'm trying to say? Everybody's intuitive. That's God. That's the divine. That's the divine protecting you and guiding you. Your ancestors, the divine. We're all guided. That's the angels. That's the Orisha. That's the Loa. That's your higher self, your intuition. Most women are not wrong about men. When your intuition is telling you something ain't right, that's God. We're all intuitive, child. I'm intuitive. My mother's intuitive. My dad's intuitive. Some people tap into it more, but it does not mean they are psychic. It does not mean they are mediums. These are actual gifts. My gift is to see into the future. That's just what, that's just the, the type of gift I have. But am I always right? Hell no. I was wrong about Donald Trump. I saw Donald Trump being the next president. What I was seeing was the manipulation behind it to become president. I wasn't wrong about the details. Like I actually saw the trifling shit going on in the background. I just thought he was going to win by doing the trifling shit and he lost. He came off as a two-term president, not a one. So I miss and oh y'all when I when just like y'all I'm gonna put it out here I may be wrong I did not even know that DeSantis from Florida y'all hit up my cash app y'all if y'all are feeling this if y'all are feeling this hit up my cash app it's pinned in the comments y'all I'm gonna I think back Back in 2020, I asked, who is going, y'all need to go back to one of my, um, I got to find these videos, but they're so old and so random. I don't know where to, I said the next president is going to come from a tropical place. I'm thinking, oh, the next president is coming from California, California, or like a hot place, Texas. Bitch, the next president is coming from Florida. And I, I need to find this reading where I said this man is coming from a warm place. He may even have a mixed lineage. I said this. People have inboxed me. If you guys can just find the video and send it to me. Then I find out two weeks ago that DeSantis is running. I said, oh, y'all, I'm going to put the DeSantis reading in my OnlyFans. I said, fuck you, Patreon. They don't even allow you to post real long videos. DeSantis is either going to be the next president of the United States or he's going to come very close, well, like second place. That man is going to cut, 
y'all better enjoy the half of 2024. Because if this, if you think Florida is bad, if you think Florida is bad, if this man steps into office, we got problems. I don't think Donald Trump is going to be president because I think they're going to do both Republicans and both Democrats because they're mad at what happened in the Capitol and they don't want him to. They're going to drag that nigga. He they they will they can even probably try to veto it. Oh, with through the Electoral College because they do not want him in office at all. This is a man who stands a chance. This is a man who stands a chance. And they're not going to allow Donald Trump into office because he's got too many people on his revenge list. He, 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 they're not going to allow the corruption to be revealed. There are people who would rather die trying than let Donald Trump into office again because he's going to spill everybody's tea they would rather assassinate him than let than let that happen. Poison him, give him cancer of the pinky toe, and stuff like that. My problem with Donald Trump was two things. How people who are very racist and prejudiced, y'all, I almost molly walked. I'm talking about, I almost punched a 70 something year old woman in Publix because she called me colored. And then she had on a Trump hat. I said, ma'am, I will knock you into 1962. I said, you better shut your motherfucking mouth, you dirty asshole. I said, call me colored one more time, you dirty asshole. Oh, she... I will knock you into 1963. She got calling me colored girl. I said, colored? I said, oh, okay. Okay, old lady. Wearing a whole Trump and did a, no, bitch, you a little bit too, too sassy in this Publix. You can wait in line for some crab legs, ho. This woman said the colored girl with her Trump hat And her Trump shirt is take. I said, ma'am, I will knock you into 1963. I was at a gas station. Pumping gas in Woodstock, Georgia. This white man and and these are not isolated incidences. I don't have no Clinton, no book. I don't have no political propaganda in my car. This man pulls up on the op at Quick Trip. If you're in Georgia, you know QT, not Wawa's because I'm not in Florida. Pulls up on the op. I don't even remember. Yeah, Donald Trump for life. Donald Trump for life. America. La, 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 la. If you know Woodstock, these white people carry guns. They like to hunt deer. They like to shop in Walmart. They like to wear military um shit. What is it called? The hunting gear? Don't know. <clears throat> yes, had a Confederate flag. He looked me in my face. And he said, Donald Trump. Don you think I was going to say anything? You think I was going to risk my life? With a crazy, the Trump supporters were highly racist. They felt very comfortable saying crazy shit to you. They felt very comfortable 
My mother worked at a nursing home where the old people would put their Trump signs up. Do you know what all of the Haitians and the Jamaicans and the Spanish, you know what they did? They left you in your dirty fucking diapers. They left you in your urine. You know what they would do when your family would come with their pro-Trump? They would let you decay in your own filth. You see, there was too much division. The division has always been there. Since you don't like Black people, our Black asses don't have to wipe your ass. How about that? We'll let the morning shift do it. It got so bad that the racist ass lady who worked in my mom's nursing home, she had this bitch. This bitch rolled up with her car with a big Donald Trump sign. None of the CNAs showed up to work. My mother's an LPN. My mother is actually a supervisor over the city. My mother, nobody showed up to work that day. Unity is power. Division is weakness. Your Trump supporting racist ass, because Trump re represented racist, you go clean their filthy asses. Oh, they was, they took down everything because nobody would come to work. Trump added an air of intolerance. He added an air of uncomfortable. He made minorities very uncomfortable. And then all of the Candace Owens came out of the swamp like swamp thing. He made the racial air so tense. I knew interracial couples who broke up. All of these weird Candace Owens motherfuckers and the Kanye Wesses and anything that makes Black people uncomfortable, I'm not voting for. Anything that gives racists a gun to use against people of color and to make us uncomfortable for simply being black, I'm not voting for you. My, my blackness comes first. When I was under Donald Trump, I felt like I had to be careful as a black person in the United States. So I will never vote for Donald Trump. There were more racial... In I can tell y'all some stuff. I'm in, I'm in it outside of Atlanta is a completely different North Georgia, South Georgia, East Georgia, West country, 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 Democrat, middle. The rest is Donald Trump hell. And if you're black, they label you as a Democrat automatically and they harass you. I'm not going under Donald Trump. He gave too many racists too much leeway. Imagine being a black person and you're in Athens, Georgia, and everywhere you turn, there's this racial tension and everybody has on a Donald Trump shirt. You're like, what did I just step into? I went to Athens, Georgia. I don't know what the fuck was going on, but everybody had on a fucking Donald Trump, Trump shirt, Trump. They were looking at us black people like, bitch, we will lynch you. And you think I'm going to vote for that? So, no. I'm just simply off of my experience of being under Trump 
I will never vote for Donald Trump. Never. As a black person, never. Unknown caller. I cannot wait for the day when Candace Owens is old and her children embrace black culture just to drag her ass. Because I've turned so many cards on Candace Owens. Your children is your karma. Your daughter is going to marry a whole nigga. Your son is going to have dreadlocks and listen to hip hop music. Your kids are going to call you a house witch. Her karma is her kids. Your kids won't even like you. Your husband cheats on you with white women. Your own husband don't even like you. Her sadness is going to be with her family. That's the only thing that makes me sleep good at night with Candace Owens. Candace Owens said that Breonna Taylor, you see, 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 you see. Candace Owens is trying to get y'all to agree with her stance on family values. And a lot of y'all agree with her family values, but that does not hide the thing. The shit makes me so upset that I, I can't even repeat the shit that she said about Breonna Taylor. You have to go and Google and watch the videos. Basically, can't. The things that she has said about black people who are literally murdered in cold blood. But then turns around and says, oh, da -da 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 -da. oh I agree with her. I agree with her. Because where can she catch you on family values? But I know who this woman is to her core. She hates her blackness. She hates black people. Okay? Just by the fact that she still doesn't understand what a blowout and a hot press is, it tells me a lot about her. She hates herself so much that she doesn't even want to physically deal with her own hair. She crawls out of her own skin. So Candace Owens, to me, I can sleep at night because your children and your husband are going to give you hell. And that's the only thing your children are going to be straight niggas. And it's going to embarrass you and it's going to really humble you. Your half your ancestors don't even fuck with you. The things she said about Brianna Taylor, I will take to my motherfucking grave. You, I can understand if you don't like niggas. But for you to hate black people so much that you can't even look into a case. It's different if Breonna Taylor, bah, 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 it's different. This was literally an innocent woman. But because you think all black people are like Nicki Minaj's husband, a petty, a project ass nigga, you don't think black people deserve justice. A lot of people think that black people are innately violent. We're just violent and we're animalistic. We don't have... Imagine when half your ancestors don't fuck with you. Half your ancestors don't even fuck with you. I don't have, y'all who are tarot readers, y'all who are the diviners, y'all who are astrologists, her personal life is going to be her karma. It may look good on the outside, but her kids are going to give her half. Talk about this shit. We yeah. I've never hated being black. 
I may hate the ignorance within the black community and I hate project and ghetto niggas because they, they, they ravage women and they don't know how to treat women and children. But me hating my blackness and my indigenous and that there is still a struggle and the struggle continues. No. Mm -mm. I would never vote for Donald Trump. We suffer too much black people. I was scared as hell to go to certain parts of the United States, even certain parts of Georgia, because it was Trump land. Niggas ain't allowed. I don't want to live like that. Mm -mm. But DeSantis, oh, he got a chance. He got a chance. He got a chance. He got a chance. Big chance. A man who will come from warm weather. I'm thinking California. Florida. DeSantis is tr I didn't say I was going to vote for him. I didn't say I was retarded. I don't fuck with Cubans who don't like their blackness. I don't fuck with Cubans who don't like their indigenous native blood. I don't fuck with Cubans who don't identify with, multi with multiculturalism. I don't fuck with Cubans who think they're white. Because you're part of the problem. I'm not voting for him. I would rather not vote for nobody in this next election because there's nobody who's qualified. DeSantis, if, if y'all think, you know who he reminds me of? I'm going to tell y'all something. I cannot wait to put on my, my OnlyFans. It's easy to do. You just go on there. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, I'm live on YouTube. I got to speak code. What are you trying to say? Yeah, now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will send you code through the phone. Because I'm live. Okay, bye. So, you know what his energy reminds me of? If this man steps into office, you know who he reminds me of? The energy, I don't think it's going to be that extreme. It reminds me of Ronald Reagan. It gives Ronald Reagan vibes. When I'm, when I'm telling you my father lived through the Reagan era in Boston, Massachusetts, Ronald Reagan shut down every single motherfucking project, every single motherfucking medical facility for, for the mentally ill. And they filled the city of Boston with the mentally ill. He shut down every motherfucking program. Children were starving at school. The crime rate in the city went up. My father said people were even being robbed on the motherfucking. My father had to carry a gun with him to go to MIT. My father actually, no, he was actually going to Wentworth. He was actually going to Wentworth in their engineering program for foreigners. 
My father, if you're from Boston, you know Wentworth. Actually, no. My father was going to Boston Technical College or something. My father, when I'm telling you my father hates Ronald Reagan, my, when my father find out Ronald Reagan died, my father doesn't even drink. My father went and bought a fucking beer and praised God that that nigga died. My father said the Reagan era was one of the most worst eras for people crack heads every... My dad said, it's like you woke up and six months later, it was the mentally ill, crackheads, whole bunch of niggas who just got out of jail, people being robbed in the train, people being stabbed. My dad said, when that man became president, you were in third world hell. He shut, children were hungry in school. My father said, and people don't talk about it, but Wentworth is in the hood. If you're from Boston, you know Wentworth is in a lot of these major universities are in the hood or certain sections of their programs are in the fucking hood back in the day. My father was blah, 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 Louis XIV and it's all on me, nigga, you just bought a shot. My dad was, no. Yes, Wentworth is down the street from Mission Hill, the Mission Hill Projects, bitch. You know what I'm talking about. Those big ass fucking projects. I was scared to walk through the motherfuckers. Girl. My father told me there were so many crackheads walking down the street. You didn't know if it was a crackhead under Reagan. You didn't know if it was a nigga who just got out of jail. You you didn't know if it was somebody who 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 escaped the um mental institution. You didn't know. And they were all up in the trains, all up in the buses. I remember, I remember little because I was a little girl, but I remember little, I remember crackheads cracking. Crackheads cracking. What the fuck? Like, I don't think it's going to be as bad as the Reagan era, but DeSantis can bring us there. He is crazy. And I'm saving that reading as part of the New Year's reading. My father literally had to buy a street gun because he was carrying a knife and like a, a machete. A machete. And that wasn't enough. He had to carry a gun. If you look like you had a book bag, you would get robbed. Those Ronald Reagan era people who survived through it, they do not fuck with Ronald Reagan's or the Reagan's. They don't, we don't fuck with them niggas because it was just, people were losing public housing. People were sleeping on the streets, girl. Uh, uh, okay. And I was from Dorchester. I was from Dorchester, the hood. The fucking hood, Dorchester. Now Dorchester is like, what, Asian? I was from Dorchester. I lived by the train station and the and the Bradleys and the stop and shop. And I lived by that train station where that stop and shop was. We lived in the hood. So the Reagan era was, I literally... I was a little girl, but I remember people turning into crackheads.
okay? Like my mother said, man, fuck Dorchester. And we moved to Chelsea, the Spanish hood. But the Spanish hood was better than Dorchester. So we lived in Chelsea. We couldn't live in Everett. That they were too fucking racist and Irish in Everett. We couldn't really live in Waltham. Fuck Watertown. We don't want to live on Malcolm X Boulevard. So we lived in Chelsea. So I grew up in Chelsea. I went to St. Rose Catholic School. Um, my mom worked two jobs. She worked hard. My dad, he was at Boston Tech, Wentworth, graduated from MIT, transferred from Wentworth and went to MIT. Some of the most racist motherfuckers you will ever meet are in higher education. My father said a white man from Europe told him to his fucking face at Wentworth when he was at Wentworth. Black people do not have the brain to study high levels of math and physics. Th there is literally something physically wrong with our brains where we cannot think that high. When it has been proven black people invented astrology. We were reading the stars, bitch. We didn't even fuck with Somerville. Um, we didn't even. This man, my father, one day, they had a cheat sheet on a test, right? My father told me this. My father said that he literally copied the cheat sheet. Everybody in the class copied the cheat sheet. He gave all of the blacks, which there was very few, C's. He gave the Arabs B's and he gave the white people A's. Math comes from Egypt. Doesn't math come from like Kemet? Math came from black people, child. These, my father said the most racist people he ever met was, was in higher education. They do not think that we have the brain to be doctors, to be lawyers, to process higher thoughts. They think that we're simple-minded, simpletons. Then he went to MIT. Do you know my father almost filed a class action lawsuit with some Africans because of how the teachers at MIT were, and then come to find out they're a the teachers back then were Arabs and Asians. They even, they used to tell my father, oh, most of y'all don't prioritize education. So most of y'all can't even really make it to MIT. My father said a white man at MIT asked him, how did you get in here? My father said it took everything in him not to punch that man in his face. Portals plus five zero nine three six three four one zero one. He said I had to pick my education over beating this white nigga up. So when you are in places like like went like MIT, Harvard, Yale, Ivy League level schools, they're shocked you're there because black people don't have higher thoughts. We're we're rappers, we're basketball players, and we're football players, and we're we're their CNAs. We don't, we cannot process high thoughts. We can entertain them, but we cannot actually be doctors and lawyers and engineers.
it's easy to them for us to be basketball players. It's physical athleticism. They think we can sing, dance, and play sports, all entertainment. Anything outside of that is too high for our brains to actually process. That is why it bothers me when I see black men who would rather fuck and make babies than go and get an education because you're proving these racist ass people correct. You're proving that you have no higher thoughts. My father went to MIT. And my dad would tell you that he wasn't even one, one of the top students. He struggled. He struggled. And it gets even worse. So he graduates as an engineer, right? A chemical and electrical engineer, dual major at MIT. My father could not find a job to save his motherfucking life. He even had white people who graduated with him from MIT interview him at jobs and still not hire him. My father said he got interviewed by somebody whose daddy put him in put him in MIT, he could barely solve physics problems. Interview him. My father, Boston is a great place to get an education, but it is not a great place for black people who are professional. You, you get your education there, but leave. Go somewhere else. They will not hire you as doctors. They will not hire you as engineers. They will not hire you as lawyers. Those jobs are for the white people and the Arabs and the Asians and Arabs are considered European. So you may want to take your education and go somewhere else. Go to Texas. Go to the South. They'll hire you. Go to the Midwest. But ain't nobody. They're not hiring black people in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Maine. Hell no. That's for the white people. That's not for you. So that is what I'm trying to say. Like, y'all, I don't fuck with people who are Donald Trump supporters. I don't fuck with DeSantis people because really they feel like black people are animals. They feel like we're savages. They feel like we are rappers entertainers and athletes and somebody there to wipe your old parents ass i'm not voting for any of them i'm not getting involved in that um that's all i can say but i don't hate white people you know what i'm saying i'm cool with a lot of white people um some white people ain't even racist, child. I've had actually more black people try to take me down than white people. It's crazy. That's what's crazy. When I used to work, I had problems with black women than I did with white people. The, the white people couldn't understand why I was going back and forth with LaQuisha. So I don't have, but I understand the nature of certain races of people. I understand the nature of white people. I understand the nature of black people. I understand the, the, the nature of Asians. I understand the nature of Caribbean. I understand the, the nature of Spanish. We all have a nature. So I'm going to work with, with what I know. One of the people who tried so hard to get me fired from a job was a black woman. This woman bothered me so fucking bad because I said that I didn't like Steve Harvey. This all came from Steve Harvey, girl. Steve Harvey. Because I told the bitch I don't like Steve Harvey. And I think he peddles to older black women. I don't like Steve Harvey. 
and baby. From then on, that bitter black bitch <laughs> went after my ass. And I couldn't do anything to keep, because she was my supervisor. She was my boss. She was the boss of the whole building. But baby, she would write me up if I farted. Oh, you farted and it smelt. So I'm writing you up. Oh, I saw you picking your nose. It's gross. Um, I'm writing you up. Baby, I picked up that phone. And I was sad. I was sad. Because this is a black woman who's actually had to work very hard and dealt with a lot of prejudice to get to where she was. And you made me pick up that phone. You, you made me pick up that phone and call my voodoo priestess aunt in Haiti. You, you made me pick it up. Because months of terrorizing me. Because I didn't like no big headed ass um, Harvey. And because I wouldn't shiver when you walked in a room. You made me call the voodoo priestess in Haiti. To fuck you up. My aunt rang down on that bitch twice. That woman, she even started having medical issues. Like, she literally was gone for two months. My aunt said, while she's gone, apply for another job. Because when she comes back, she's going to go even harder on you. At first, she was like calling out, not coming in. Um, it was weird. All of a sudden, she, she was just like disoriented child and not feeling well, allergies. Like she would come to work. And that's how it started. Come to work, leave early. Or come late, leave early. Go to and I'm like, doo -doo 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 -doo. not saying nothing, say nothing. She was literally gone for almost three months with sickness. By the time she came back, I was almost, I had, I was gone. I transferred out to a completely different department. Not only that, while she was gone, I filed a complaint that went all the way up to the head. My aunt literally put them people in my hands. And I went the fuck about my business. That is when you use witchcraft. When somebody will not leave you alone. But it upset me. It upset me that I had to do heavy magic on a woman who actually worked very hard to become head of that building. It, it, it bothered me. It bothered me. Then I went to my other job. This fucking bitch. This fucking bitch. This black. This fucking bitch graduated from law school in Ivy League. I don't want to give too much info. Graduated from an Ivy League law school, this bitch decided to rain down on me. Another black woman. Black excellence. Black excellence. This woman is fine, fit, and feminine. She jogs every morning, five, six miles a day. Her hair and her wigs are always perfectly coiffed. She is that girl. Went to an Ivy League law school, top three. 
this, me and her are literally almost the same age. This bitch was like, rain down on that bitch twice. Rain down on that bitch twice. You know me, I'm going to be forever. This bitch said, I'm going to rain down on you, ho. That whole rain. One day, I went in my car and I cried. Y'all, that hoe made me cry in my car. This hoe is smarter than me, more strategic than me, and she's a savage. Soft, feminine, and fit in a lawyer and a savage. I can't compete with this bitch. But y'all, I've always had my long nails. I've always been very outspoken. And when I'm good at my job, I'm a beast at my job. And I never stepped into law school. Well, I did, but that's a whole other story. This woman, and I would tell her, no, I don't agree with that. Or no, that's not going to work. And she didn't like that. She felt that I am Ivy League. I am an AKA, whatever the pink and green. I am Black Excellence. I am Michelle Obama. I am Coretta Scott King. I am that girl. You are a bachelor's degree holding, 330 pound, long, long wig wearing, long wear. You are a fucking ghetto hood ass bitch. I am that girl. So. And also, you are not scared to speak your mind. I'm an Aries. I'm going to tell you what it is, when it is, and what it is, and go about my business. One day, we were in a meeting, and I said, no, this is wrong. And I'm going to tell you why it's wrong, and I'm going to tell you. But it was also my intuitive gifts. Spiritually, I sat in front of a whole bunch of lawyers, and I said, we're going to lose this case. And this is why, and she's wrong, and I'm right. I sure did. I said, fuck it, y'all. Watch. I said, watch how this plays out. And then I presented my evidence in the actual meeting. Oh, you are out of order. We need to have a meeting. We need, haven't you guys noticed? I haven't done any witchcraft on her. I haven't done any voodoo on her because by then, I was already getting involved in voodoo. I wasn't initiated, but I was almost there. I was trying to handle this the adult way. She said, I need to have a meeting because Miss such and such is out of order. I said, bitch. I didn't say bitch. In that meeting, I said, because you think you're a lawyer, you think you know more than me. Yes, I may ju just be a fucking paralegal, but bitch, I know that this case is going to end like this. You can have as many meetings as you want. I said, but this is how it's going to end. Oh, you're out of order, girl. I dragged that hole like a bull in a rodeo. When I'm telling you, I, again, I'm having to attack another one of my people, another one of my women, beautiful girl, black excellence at the top of her game, making $200,000 a year straight out of college because she's a savage with law. I, when I'm telling you, we rain down on that bitch the same way she... That woman, when she left that law firm, her wig was on sideways, half her nails were broken off, and she was missing a whole heel. She couldn't even give a two weeks notice. We made her life so fucking miserable in that law firm. 
We made everything, we made her make wrong decisions in almost every single case that they did no longer want her at that firm. That bitch walked away like Seely from the color purple. When I'm telling you, we broke that bitch down. We fogged her mind to where every decision she made came back to haunt her. She even lost a case child. And I sat there. Mm -hmm. I was literally one step away from getting fired because of her. That bitch walked away. She walked in with red bottoms and walked out with Payless shoes. Her mental was so fucked up, she didn't even realize her wig was on sideways. But it saddened me that I had to do that. It made me sad that I had to spiritually attack another black woman who is at the biggest pinnacle of her game because she would, y'all bullying people. Some of y'all are very nice outside of work. And when some of y'all clock in, y'all turn into fucking bullies. Y'all are fucking assholes. Fucking assholes. So who you are outside of work is not who you are in work. And I didn't think she was a bad person, you know, but bitch, we had to rain down on you. We literally put demons in her mind, demons in her house, demons at the job. She was so, she even stopped exercising. She started gaining weight. Her mind was just like, oh, oh. She would come to meetings looking like she's just disheveled and confused. She started having problems with her paralegals. So, walked in with red bottoms, walked out with Payless. I don't know what to tell you, sis. Maybe I heard y'all that she follows me on Instagram. So she may watch this video and put two and two together and be like, that's why I lost my job at the firm. Yeah, bitch, I did voodoo on you. I brought you down a few steps and watch your ass out. And you know what's crazy? If you weren't actually wrong, which, of course, you're a narcissist, you're a lawyer, you think you're God, you have a God complex, you're going to think you didn't do anything wrong, but you did. Because the work wouldn't have hit you that hard if you weren't guilty. That's a secret, too. The work hit you hard because you were guilty. If you weren't that guilty, your ancestors and your spirits would have, your, your Godhead, your Godhead would have fought harder to keep you there, but because you were wrong, you got escorted the fuck out. I hope you are watching because you do watch my shit because you're obsessed. You don't understand how a plus size, six inch nail wearing hoe like me can be on your financial level, but you don't see all these fucking boxes. My office looks like an explosion of boxes. Bitch, I probably make more money than you. You don't understand how a girl like me can be on your financial and your tax bracket, ho. Keep watching, bitch, because I'm just going to keep going higher. <laughs> because at the end of the day, in God's eyes, we all have great capabilities. And you, and y'all, it gets even better, right? Maybe two years ago, the bitch caught me in the Louis Vuitton store, bitch. Yes, it's nice to flex. I walked in there. I said, let me get that bag. No, actually, I want two bags. That bitch was so shocked. 
she 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 didn't even say nothing because she's married to a white man. That bitch was shocked to even see me in there because only Ivy League, aka pledging ass hoes like her with boring ass French tips can walk. That bitch was shocked. Success is the biggest comeback. That bitch, I was still fat as fuck, but I was paid though. That bitch was holding her wine glass. I said, oh, hey. You used to work at the law firm. Let me get two of those bags. How, how, how are you? You look great. She, she barely, y'all, spirit will give you those moments just so you can flex in a hater's face. She was shocked. Y'all need to flex some of your success. I'm not saying, I'm not saying be stuck up, be mean, but that was, I knew that was spirit. Because that day, I didn't even plan on going to the Louis Vuitton store. That was a flex, ho. She was shocked. Yes, my big size 26 ass is up in this bitch with my six inch nails. Run me two bags. And I know you a fan, ho, because you stay watching Three Hoodoo Sisters on your cooking page, ho. You a fan and a hater. So when God gives you those moments, Take, take advantage of them. She was so shocked. She could be, oh, hey. Y'all, I've had people flex on me. I'm not mad. I'm Haitian. I don't believe in you until you prove it to me. I know God is capable of anything. But I know God is capable of any. God will take the sewer rat and turn him into the president of the United States. Satan can do it too. But I know that hard work pays off. There are people who have flexed on me. I said, okay. I bo bo. I'm actually, I can be one of your haters. And when I see you flexing, bitch, I'm one of them people I will give you props where they're deserved. I ain't that much of a hater. If if I've had people on me who are in the spiritual game, who are doing better than me, bitch. I'm proud of you. Because six years ago, you was a dusty dollar store selling ass candle ass hoe. Look at you now, bitch. Driving a top line Benz. I'm proud of you. I ain't no hater. I really not. But I'm Haitian. I don't believe in you until you prove it to me. Oh, okay, okay, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I see it, I'll believe it. But I do know that God, it's like you don't have a heaven or hell to put me in. You don't have a rich or poor to put me in. People like Cardi B, I'm going to be honest with you. People like Cardi B and Krishan, they're trashy as fuck. I could never see them as millionaires. But guess what? God said in the universe and the ancestors said, you're not the one to judge. You don't have a heaven or hell or rich to put them in. I don't understand how Krishan is a millionaire. But again, I understand because of how our society is set up. But I don't have a rich or poor to put her in. I'm not God. That's the thing. You can hate a motherfucker, but you don't know when their come up is coming. So I'm not I'm not here to we, we really cannot dictate where people will go in life. I was really, really judged because of my weight and because and 
This bitch is not only fat, but she talks her shit. She's rude. She rants. She thinks she's right. She reads with her opinions. So, and, but God is still my judge. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. I don't have a poor or rich to put you in. That's between you, God, and your angels and your fucking ancestors. I may not think you deserve it. There's a lot of people who don't think I deserve to be where I'm at. Bitch, you don't know me 365 days of the week. You don't know what I go through. I got how many orders to pack? Are you going to come and help me pack them, bitch? But you got so much to say. People cannot stand a fat bitch with six-inch nails. They don't like us. Why are you so opinionated? People actually think that fat people are lazy. No, fat people are hungry. We're hungry. We have hungry minds. We're hungry, bitch. I'm hungry. But, but I'm not lazy. So people would be like, this bitch can barely see her pussy or her feet, but she's pushing six figures, multiple six figures. Yeah, bitch, because I'm not lazy. I'm just hungry. I've literally had people come in my store when I was 330 pounds, look me up and down, look at my store and not understand because a fat bitch can't have all this. Bitch, I'm a fat, workaholic, Haitian ass bitch. And I love helping people. I love what I do. I've seen what I do change people's lives. Of course, I haven't been able to help everyone. Of course, but I love to help people. I love to make these products. I love to find powders and herbs and animals and and I love what I do. That I I love I love I love witch witchy shit. I love to mix oils and I'm a witch. I love it. I love to make you guys products. Like, it's my favorite thing to do next to talking shit. So, guys, don't let anybody tell you where you don't belong. They told my father, you don't belong here because you're black. They told my mother, you don't belong here. You're a woman. You don't belong here. No, you belong wherever the fuck you can afford. Make as much money as you can and be in places where people don't expect you. Money talks, bullshit walks. Keep making that money. Keep making that money. Keep going to, to the fucking therapist. Keep healing. Keep running from these 70, 80% of crazy ass niggas. I would I rather buy a purse or go on a date with the 70 to 80% bitch? I will go and buy me another motherfucking bag, bitch. Before I will go and buy me another dog. Poodle, a poodle. Chateau Doudou. I'm gonna call my all black standard poodle Chateau Doudou. Before I date or marry a offset and a petty. Bitch, I will buy a whole, a whole other house before I deal. With 70 to 80% of the male population, I would rather buy Joy and keep going to a fucking therapist. Yes, I'm buying a big ass poodle, big ass black bitch, and I'm gonna call her Chateau Doudou. Oh, I love me a Fifi, or oh, you're Haitian, because I know if you call it Fifi, you're either French or Haitian, girl. Fifi, Fifi. My next dog is called Chateau Doudou. That's going to be a bougie-ass dog. Y'all would rather get with a fuck nigga who's going to use and abuse you than buy you a beautiful standard poodle for $3,500 and call it Chateau Doudou. Which one? Pain and heartache or love? Chateau Doudou. Chateau Doudou 
It is for me. Yeah, y'all. If your life is peace, here's how you know you shouldn't be in a relationship with somebody. Write a list. <laughs> right before you met this person. And then write a list when you're with them. And write, would I rather have a purse or a poodle? Or would I rather be, which one makes me happier? Which one is more peaceful? Mm, there's not a lot of peace here. There's more peace with the black poodle and the purses. And the tricks. No sha chateau doo doo over offsets and petties. A trip to Bali, into Italy, into Dubai before you date a P. Diddy. You see a pattern here? Choose your happiness first. And then get your Chateau Doudou. Please yourself before you please a fuck nigga. What would I rather have? Dinner at the Ritz Carlton or have to stay on the phone with a crying ass nigga? I'm going to hang up the phone and go have brunch at the fucking Ritz Carlton because that makes me happy. Y'all, it's not hard. It's, I choose peace. I choose peace. Ladies, even fellas, run at the first red flag. I had a man tell me that he was going to teach. Yeah, y'all. Did it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what? Yeah, you know, because I need a woman. Chateau Doudou. Come here, let me pet you. Chateau Doudou. Yeah, hi. Well, you know, I like to take walks in parks and drink champagne and make voodoo shit and cut off turkeys' heads and chickens' heads and travel to Haiti and Africa, do tarot readings and make products all day and pack orders all day and have clients cussing me out. What about you? Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I like a woman who wants to submit. Come on, quick. Chateau Doudou. Louis Vuitton. Gucci. Prada. Dubai. Like. <laughs> Hello? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I like to work out. I like to do boot camp style workouts. What about you? Yeah, I'm 45 and I got six kids and I'm currently fighting for custody of my wife. Quick. Hmm. I think the Hotel Loire is, is having a day party. You see, choose joy and run away. From the fuck niggas. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, girl, when I saw you, when I saw you at the W Hotel, you know, because I don't mind a plus size woman. <laughs> Block! Schedule your next trip to Miami. Okay, hey, hey, how are you? Okay, uh -huh. okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm not really, you know, looking for anything serious. I think, I think Macy's is having a sale, girl. I think the perfumes are, 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 are on sale. Uh-huh, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, because... You know, I mean, where do you live? What what do you bring to the table? Let me 
do these squats. Let me just do these squats. Let me get my body right. Let me, let me, let me go work out. Let me go. Da, 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 da. Hey, how are you? Yeah, we had such, such a great first date. Like, I really, yes, I, oh my God. Yes, I love. Yes, I, I love, you know, da, da, da. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to come over my house? What? Ooh. Let me go buy me a new wig. Let me go buy me a new wig, girl. <laughs> Let me go buy me a new wig. Let me go play this. Thing. Ladies, run. Hello? Yeah, you know, I got 16 kids, but I'm willing to have kids. I wonder if Louis Vuitton is having a sale. Go. Go about your business. You need to keep dating, don't have sex with these men, and you need to go and live your soft, fabulous life. This even applies to men, men who keep meeting the wrong type of women. Also, go to therapy. What's the bigger problem? What's the bigger problem? I'm going to tell you something. I know a lot of priestesses who have, who just, well, that's just the nature of a man. And they go from man to man, just being miserable, not understanding. No, since you got an actual psychological pattern, you may be a priestess, but you're attracted to mediocre shit. That's a psychological problem. Y'all, when I'm telling you God will eventually bring you someone, but because 70 to 80% of the men ain't shit, it's going to take time. You're going to have to want you a Chateau du Du Poodle. You're going to have to want to take trips to Dubai. You're going to want to have to have spa days. You're also going to want to have to build a community of good women around you. You see what I'm saying? Getting involved in your community. You see, you see what I'm saying? A lot of these 70, 80% of men, they do not want to go to therapy. Their mama didn't go to therapy. She just lost her. She lost all her edges and just put on a wig. She dealt with it. Then she poured all her trauma onto her sons and her children and her daughters. Y'all, ladies, do not emotionally attach to these men. Women emotionally attach to sex and promises. He's just promising you all this shit, but really ain't done shit. Do not have sex with these men. Do not emotionally attach. Most people can only keep on a mask for 90 days. So they're going to show their ass eventually. Okay? Date with purpose. Don't be... Now, some of y'all are delusional. Some women are delusional in this dating game. Bitch, you mean to tell me most adults start having kids in their 20s? He can't have no kids? Come on now, sis. And he a nigga, he got a few kids by now. We're older. You know what I'm saying? Be realistic. He makes $75,000 a year. He can't fly you out to Dubai, sis. Some of y'all are delusional, though. Like, some of y'all really are. And a lot of you guys think if you marry higher in the tax bracket, like, if y'all date men who make $500,000, $600,000, no, it actually, the cheating and the lies get worse. He's just more of a provider. So the black man is not king. He has the potential to be a king. You mean to tell me if my father chose to live like a raggedy ass nigga, he's a king. No, he's a fool. He's a pauper. But he chose to become a king. You have the potential to be a king. You have the potential to be a queen. But if you're not 
trying to do something in your life, you're a pauper. You're my field slave. Bitch, because your daddy paid for it, Brandon. Brandon, do you live with your mother? Do you drive a 1989 Honda Accord? Oh, Brandon, we know you're poor. The broke, there's always a random broke nigga. That... I don't know how they find me. I don't know, but most of them are broke. They come from the manosphere. Because I know he came from that red pill, blue pill manosphere. Mama don't have no edges. Daddy ain't nowhere around. Working a mediocre job, fucking mediocre children. No, having mediocre children and fucking mediocre. They always find us. I don't know how they find us. I don't know how Brandon finds people. Like, how do you find us? How does people like Brandon, how do you find us? I don't, they be driving, yeah, I have a Mercedes Benz. Mercedes, talking so hard about a Mercedes Benz. When you meet them, it's a 2005 Benz. But it's still a Benz. These are the Brandons of the world. Got a 2012 Benz and flexing harder. Benz stay in the shop. Don't have a real bank account. These are the 70, the Brandons are the 70 to 80% of the men we have in our society. Brandon has time to argue with a woman on the internet because he is in his soft and feminine phase. He likes facials. He likes getting his nails done occasionally. He likes a good massage. He lives with his mother who has no edges. It's, it's very tiring. But this is 70 to 80 percent of the men. And then he's like, why do you have shades on in a closet? Because he doesn't know that, yes, women can actually rent buildings and be surrounded by United States Postal Service because they have over a thousand orders to fulfill to Black Friday. But he doesn't think big. He thinks in his mother's bedroom in her house. because That's where he lives. Brandon. Y'all, stay away from these men. Many of them are so, it's scary. And it's like, you really have to date. And when you see that first red flag, you run. Are you crazy? Run. Run. When men have too many kids, you, you, you can't control your reproductive organs and you're not good with managing money. You may work hard. You may work two jobs. Too many kids? Oh, no. I got to go. And they're all under the age of 18? No. How are you 45 and you have a one-year-old? But your oldest is 23 in the Army. How are you in your mid 40s and you and then your baby mama's 27? Y'all, there's even men. I'm going to tell y'all something. Successful women, you attract predators. You attract men who are looking for a come up through a woman. Most men don't care about your career. 
most women who are extremely successful, they end up being like Mary J. Blige, Sherry Shepard. These men literally go to high end places. They get dressed up and they make sure that they lift weights with their penis every morning. They're doing penis lifts because they know that's what they're going to captivate you with is the dick. These men go to high end places and look for women like you who like your soft life. They may even buy you a drink or two, take you on one to two dates. But the plot is to get into your pussy and your bank account. A lot of successful women attract users. A lot of these men are actually very physically attractive. Some of them are even well educated and are homeowners, but their their money is now they hit a roof. So now they're looking for you to partner up with and to pretend to be a provider and to but to really just go 50-50. He wants you to help him break through that wall. Erica Dixon, yeah. <laughs> they're lifting weights with their penis because they're trying to use that as the gateway. Y'all, be careful. Like, most people are not out here with good intentions. You got to really cut people off quick, quick, quick. And sadly, the way a lot of men were raised in our community, they don't have emotional intelligence. They just don't. They don't know how to process and express their emotions. It's either happy or sad. Anything in the middle, it bewilders them. Their emotion will is happy, sad, angry, and horny, and hungry. Anything past that, they can't process it. And, and you can't force them to. It's sad, but you really can't. You can't force them to process. They don't have the processing capability. They... they they're scared. They don't know how to process that. They're, they're like, what's all this processing? So you can't, you can't change these people. You have to get away from them. You know, it, like you, you literally got to grab your purse and run because you can't change them. You cannot heal them. You cannot change them. These successful six-figure men want six-figure women to pay half because they think you're going to steal their money. Y'all, as a woman who holds down her own and is doing well in life, Nigga, when I met you, what do you have that I really want? That I can't give to myself. That I haven't given. I, what? These niggas, what goal did you have to really dig? Like, it, what? What? I already have a house. I already have a car. I already have a business. I'm looking for a companion who I can share my emotional and spiritual needs with. You have nothing I want. Really? Like, what gold is there to dig? I don't want your old man pension. Like, I'm not saying there aren't, there are plenty of women out there who do date in a predatory way, like to capture men with money and dig all the, the gold that they can get. But y'all, the majority of these men don't even make $100,000 a year, bro. The average American is making what, $60,000, $70,000 a year? You ain't got nothing for me to dig. 
you you drowning in child support. You're barely making enough money to pay your mortgage. I'm out here looking for a spiritual and emotional bond, child. I can't dig for nothing. I may, I probably make more money than you. I, I there's no, I can't take nothing from you. You don't have it. Or you can find a man who has more than you because there's plenty of them here in Atlanta, but they're going to breadcrumb the shit out of you. Like the average man, I think makes seventy or eighty thousand dollars a year. Sir, I make more money than you. I, you can't give me nothing but some dick and some companionship. Like you, I'm, I'm looking for a companion. I'm not looking. You, you literally, what? Well, steal your money. You don't get your retirement for another thirty years. What am I about to take? You got kids up the ass. You probably have herpes. I, I don't, there's, I just want a balanced man, not no perfect man, but what are we going to take? Oh, you got a house, bitch. I do too. Oh, you got two cars. I do too. You don't have anything that I don't have. I mean, these men literally think you're trying to take something, but what do you really have? And by the time you hit 50, you got erectile dysfunction, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes. I may, I may be fat. I don't have high blood pressure. My, I don't have sugar to diabetes. I don't have, I don't have anything. Like I have to literally take, once black men hit 50, they become handicapped. 50 something, dick don't work, blood pressure high, shape, have a womanly shape. I'm with you for love. I'm with you for love, nigga. I gotta pull your stomach up to fuck. What? When a lot of men hit their 50s, they're literally casket ready. Ready to die. Sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. Snoring so loud, like Christopher Columbus from 1492 can hear his fucking ass. He, this nigga snores so fucking loud. He got fungus on his toes. Like, what do you have to give me? Come on now, bro. It's the snoring. My pet peeve is snoring. If you snore too loud, I don't want you. I don't. I don't care. Then, if they got a little something, if they're still physically somewhat attractive, they breadcrumb you. They breadcrumb you. They breadcrumb you until one day you find out they died alone in a nursing home. Men would rather die. 70 to 80% of men would rather die in a nursing home than to compromise and to coexist. They would rather die fucking random bitches like Kevin Samuels, who is their God and the manosphere, than to actually find a companion and work on themselves. Your hairline is receding, your teeth fucked up, you snore all the time. Your dick don't work half the time, but I'm digging for gold you don't even have. Your shits can light up a whole lighthouse. When you take a dump, it smells like a corpse came out of your booty hole, but I'm digging for her. Have you ever smelt a grown man's shit? Have you ever smelt a grown man's shit? And they got the nerve to want to shit in your bathroom. <laughs> have you smelt a grown man's shit? But, but we don't have no walls 
and our body count. Y'all, I literally stopped talking to a nigga because he took a dump in my guest bathroom. I, I don't care if you work out. I don't care if you have a six pack. A fucking, a fucking night of the living dead just came out of your fucking asshole. These men be 62 years old and be like, I'm not ready to settle down. But but you ready to blow up my bathroom. I mean, men, <laughs> a man will literally eat you out of, have you watched a man eat? A man will eat two plates of food. A pack of chicken is how fucking much? Then he got the nerve. Then he got the nerve to get in your fucking bed with his low-hanging ball sacks and want to fuck you for five minutes and then get up and then take a large light of, night of the living dead in your fucking bathroom and then come and snore so fucking loud it sounds like a fucking train is running through your motherfucking bathroom and you mean to fucking tell me i want your gold nigga and then i gotta look at your crusty fungus feet and you mean to tell me i'm using you Brandon, you can't get a woman. I mean, are you trying to holler at me? Brandon, you can't afford me. I think you're on your Samsung Galaxy talking to all that shit. Brandon, you can't afford me. Brandon, you 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 live with your mother. You can't afford me. You snore. Your shits can wake the dead. I, Brandon, I know you want a woman like me, but you can't afford me. I get it. It's okay. It's okay, Brandon. High earning females don't want you and I know it eats you up inside. It's okay, <laughs> but we don't want you. You need to go to Wendy's and holla at them. Okay, go to the dollar store. Ho holler at those females. Ask your mama where she met your daddy. And go over there and meet a woman. Date within your lowness. I mean, I don't, I don't know, y'all. He wants to be with me so bad. <laughs> These niggas be loving us. They love us. That's why the, the, they're stalking us. Because they know we won't accept. I can't do nothing with you if you live at your mother's house, Brandon. I can't be seen in a 1989 Honda Accord. I'm not a ride or die on the public bus. Your ancestors are disappointed, Brandon. You took the mediocre GED path. I can't be with you. You can't even afford to buy me a wig. And I still have my edges. Y'all. Brandon, let me tell you, Brandon loves me so much, y'all, that I blocked him and he jumped on his second. You can't have me, Brandon. You can't have me. And and I love me some um Cheesecake Factory, but I would actually, just to play with you, I would tell you to take me to STK. Just to fuck with you. Let's go to Ruth Chris. Just to fuck with you. Because I know you're on that Wendy's budget. Y'all. Brandon is so triggered. He went on his second page and I blocked him again. Y'all. I feel like women, we have to put up with so much more. I'm not saying yes, men, women are very emotional. 
women can be very indecisive. Women can be very like, I think women need to also see their own faults. Men have to deal with a lot of women's emotions. So I get it. You know what I'm saying? But with men, I, I feel like we deal with so much more. And then we can't say anything. Like we have to protect your ego. I can't say that your six inch dick makes me want to vomit. But you're, but you're a nice man. But you may think my pussy lips hang too low. I don't know. We we both got to tolerate each other. What do I do? You see what I'm saying? Like, I, my pet peeve, I have two pet, well, I have a few. I will not be with a man if he snores. Everybody who knows me, if you snore, you can snore, but you cannot snore to where you wake up the dead. Snoring is it for me. I will tell you about your snoring. Also, I cannot deal with men who come too fast. I have told men you come too fast. I don't I said, look, I want to enjoy having sex with you, but you get excited too quickly, which is making me not want to be intimate. Coming too fast and snoring. And if you got fungus on your feet, you need to wear socks to, to, to the bed. And you cannot take a shit in my bathroom. You have to go take a shit downstairs or in the guest bathroom down the hall. You cannot shit in my back. Men's shits will make you want to kill them. I cannot handle the snoring. Oh my God, they gonna snore, Stabri. My parents sleep in separate. Isn't there a thing or something? Uh, a thing or a th do something about it. I can't. I can't do the snoring. I will die single. I cannot do the snoring, and you cannot take a shit in my bathroom. I then they be taking a shit and then wanting to have sex afterwards with dingleberries of poop dust under th their balls. I'm going to need you to take a shower. And I'm going to need you to let your asshole air out for at least a good two hours. The shit that women have to deal with. Have you ever had a man fart who got stomach problems? <laughs> that shit, that shit will make you ask your mother, why did you fuck? Why? Why did you bring me here to experience this? Why? Women, women, you mean to tell me we got to deal with all of this plus bad dick, plus cheating, plus 50-50, plus trying to hold on to our fucking edges. And, and, I, and I'm digging for your gold. The body odor. They talk about, oh, your pussy stinks. Oh, da 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 Have you smelled a man who hasn't bathed? Because of the testosterone, they actually smell stronger than... When a man is musty, he could open up the gates of hell. When a man is musty, the testosterone makes them 20 times. They can open up the gates of hell, y'all. They can open up the devil's booty hole. Yes, a woman's pussy can open up the gates of hell too. Okay, I know. But a, a man who is musty and has not bathed is just as funky. Like, the shit we got to deal with, we won't even talk about how some of these men won't even go to a fucking dentist. How the fuck you got full-blown halitosis at 
35. Talk about some I eat pussy. No, nigga, you eat dookie. Because half of these men don't even go, go, go to the fucking... Oh, come on now. But I'm using you for your money. Women, we put up with a lot, okay? We put up with a lot. We put up with a lot. Okay? Men also put up with us, but we I feel like we put up with way more. And then we're expected to be loving and tolerant and understanding and um cherishing and and wanting to make the house into a home but your shit is making my wigs melt your halitosis is giving me asthma it's i'm tired y'all i'm i'm tired and then I have to deal with the high probability of you cheating on me. Yeah, y'all. Date with intention. <laughs> Blew my wig back. Date with intention. Don't don't emotionally attach. Get rid of them very quickly. Get rid of them after one or two phone conversations. After one or two conversations, run. You will thank me later. You don't need no candle. You don't need no oil. You don't need no tarot reading. You, 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 you just need to run. For the hills. And you'll thank me later. Run. Yeah, I already talked about Cardi being offset. I'm not even saving this live because I was just talking, 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 and I did a little bit of reading, reading, reading. And I actually, I love men. Believe it or not, I love men. I love good men. I love men who are not that 70, 80%. Men who love their families, who do right by their families. Men who do right by their wives. They're not perfect. They may fall. I love the balanced masculine. Who, who can process their emotions. Who can process how they feel. Um, who can say, look, Sabri, I don't, I don't like this. I don't appreciate that. A man who protects, a, a man who is not just a provider financially, but likes to hug, likes to cuddle, likes to express his emotions to you, likes to figure out what is, you see what I'm saying? A balanced man, not no offset, but I don't have, I love men. I actually love men. I love their masculinity. I love how a man smells. I love their jawline. I love it when they're short or tall. I love how they take lead when they have to. You see what I'm saying? I, I love the essence of the masculine. I just don't like 70 to 80% of men because they don't know how to sit in their masculine, which ends up making you masculine. I love men. I love men. But when you're dealing with a large population that ain't shit, it can make you hate men. But I don't hate men. There are good men out there. I've met good men. We just weren't compatible. You see what I'm saying? But there are good men out there who will love you, who will work alongside you. He's not into submitting or doing. You both submit to each other and you both help each other. 
a good man is not trying to get you to submit. He's just trying to get y'all to coexist and go about his business. There are good men out there. I've met them. There are good men out there. But they don't make up the majority. So you got a lot of dating to do, ladies. Put on, put on, look, 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 y'all. Put on your Barbie shoes. Put on your Barbie. Put on your Barbie shoes, bitch. Put on your Barbie shoes. Okay? Do them squats, bitch. Do them squats, ho. And be prepared to date like an Olympic champion. Oh, next nigga. Oh, no, I don't like you. Next, 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 next. Because they're all coming for sex. So it ain't like you lost nothing but some tired ass dick. Next. Next, next, put on your Barbie pumps. Put on your Barbie pumps, bitch. Put on your Barbie pumps and get sedating. Do not hide from, from men. Don't hide from these niggas. Date them. Date, 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 date until you find the right one. Date till the handle of your purse falls the fuck off. And if you're exhausted, take two weeks off, a week off. Get back on that track, ho. Get back on that track. Do them squats. Do them lunges. Do them plunges. Get back on there. Okay? Because you're going to meet a lot of bullshit. Because the majority, 70 to 80% is bullshit. Until you meet that 2030, and then you meet that right one in the 2030. But if you want a better chance, you may want to date outside of your race and your culture. How to not get a... Hey, Vivian. I, I like your profile picture. Oh, you look a little Barbie doll. Hey, Vivian. Hey, Vivian. Vivian, that's actually a good question. How to not, I've been telling y'all for years, do not emotionally attach to these men. I can tell you, oh, Vivian, is that your blonde hair? It's looking, looking, looking like a little doll, baby. I love blonde, honey. I love a good old nasty blonde. <laughs> love a blonde. Um, the first thing that you do is Women date with the mindset of my future husband. <laughs> this is not your future husband, sis. This is not your future. This is a job interview. There's no emotions here. You also have to understand tactics. So job interview and tactics. They will try to love bomb you. They will try to rush you into a relationship. That's a big red flag, okay? They will tell you about all of their problems to sympathize. If a man is telling you all his problems, run. If a man is love bombing you, run. If a man is trying to rush you into sex or a relationship, run. If a man is Talking in manosphere language. Manosphere language. Leader. Teaching. Conditioning. Submitting. The Bible. Run. That is gender war manosphere language. He listens to too many of the fucking podcasts. The biggest sign is the lack of effort. <clears throat> he, most men don't even really want to put in the effort. He's a girl. He ain't trying. He ain't trying. And they have a plethora of excuses. 
oh, well, I forgot to call you because I was drowning in another woman's pussy. My grandmother dies. My dog has asthma. My my dolphin is my emotional trauma animal. Every excuse for not calling you. Um, just excuse after excuse. Ghosting you, coming back. His his dolphin had a seizure and he was emotionally traumatized. Um, I don't tolerate any of it. And when they try to flip it on you, you go, well, it was great. Me, do not argue with, with a man because he feels that most black women were in our masculine. So we're going to want. Black women have next to gay men, black women, gay men, Spanish women, Asian women. We have the slickest mouths. I think gay men are number known to man. We will break a nigga's ego down in under 60 seconds. Don't do it. Just tell him it was nice meeting you. Best of luck to you. Block. Don't let him in your house. Don't let him in your car. Don't let him know where you live. Don't let him show his ass. Most people can't fake it for too long. And the first sign of craziness, best of luck to you, block. Also, be careful of men. This is very common in the world we're in. Men who want to put you in the devil's booty hole of phone purgatory. Some people like Sabri. What makes you a dating expert? Like, what makes you a dating expert? What makes you someone... I've just been doing readings for a long time. Y'all. So... You start to see patterns in human behavior and you start to see don't emotionally attach. Men date to have sex. Women date to find love. I don't. Men date for sex. Women date for love. So if a man can't get nothing out of you, it's sex. Also, 70 to 80% of people on dating apps are already in a relationship. They're actually cheating on their significant other. Remember I said it's only 20 to 30% who are good? A lot of monsters are in these dating apps. So men do not date for the same re reasons that you do. Men's objective is to fuck. And when they don't really want to be, also men like to jump from relationship to relationship, meaning they're going to leave one problem or try to escape one problem and use you to escape it. So they not only come into a relationship with you, they're bringing that crazy hoe who they fuck over, who is going to run and to actually come 
and to actually run on you. So now he's not only brought his problems, she and the other baby mamas and girlfriends are about to start attacking you. Because the apps are filled with predators. There are some good men on in there, but you're going to have to weed them out quick. A lot of men can't even hold a conversation. So out next, 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 next. Yeah. And the thing is, because social media is actually programming men and women to fight each other, especially black men and women, it's literally programmed into our Instagram, in our Facebooks. So they're programming your mind to actually think that men and women are at war. So both of you go out there like this, like, oh. <laughs> It's a programming. Social media is programming your mind to think a certain way, which is not necessarily. Yes, most of the men out here ain't shit, but it's feeding you deeper into the hole. You have to be aware of what is out there in the dating world, but you cannot go out here and hate women and be trying to date. You cannot go out here and hate men and be trying to date. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. These, I literally am trying to figure out a way to remove the algorithm, to remove these dating experts and these um these manosphere and these women. There's even a women's sphere. There's a woman's sphere too. They always come. I'm like, look. But I'm part of the problem because I'm always telling y'all too in my stories, stay away from these fuck niggas. So because of that, I'm trapped in this woman's sphere, blogging, men and women hate each other. I, I can't get it off of my algorithm. I'm tired of these apps feeding me men versus women can, somebody please tell me how can do i just block everything please is there a, a tech person how do i get rid i'm so, i i want it i want these things to stop coming ladies love your man he goes only this and ladies ashanti should not be with Kelly. and yeah fuck a bitch so i can hire a maid and a cook i don't need no woman I am the motherfucking prize. What do you bring to my table? Yes, because princess treatment is... <laughs> Clear app storage and cache. Okay, I'm about to write this down. I want that shit off my shit. It, guys, it's playing psychological mind games with you. It's literally playing psychological mind games. Clear app storage cache. Because what this stuff does psychologically, it makes you give up on love. It makes you give up on men. And it gives a platform to very angry men and women. And so you think like every single man and woman is fucked up. It's mind games. Yes, 70 to 80% of the game is fucked up, but it's pushing you away from, from that 20, 30% that's decent. Click. Ooh, girl, thank you. I don't want to be in the manosphere. I don't want to be in the woman's sphere. I don't let I unfollowed so many bloggers. I don't want to hear about this. We already know it's bad. What is the cure? 
I do follow the black marriage movement. I follow more positive and result. I've just been unfollowing, blocking. I can't take it no more. Did social media ruin? Social media ruined our perception of relationships. And it also made us um, never be satisfied. I'm just going to jump in your DM. I'm going to jump in this DM. Not being able to build stronger ties. Yeah, y'all, get these, unfollow a lot of these people um, because shit, you may even have to unfollow me because I'm part of the problem. I'm like, fuck these niggas. That's real. I'm part of the problem, y'all. Y'all need to unfollow me. I'm selling shit like buying his ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm part of the motherfucking problem too, girl. I'm part of the motherfucking problem too. I'm just telling you the truth. Also, y'all, these couples pages are motherfuck. I can't spill tea because I have client confidentiality. These influencers who be showing you their marriages and taking showers with their husbands and the wives are clipping their wives' toes and massaging them and helping them get dressed, seven out of ten of that is fake. They are having just as many problems as you are. I'm a reader. I can't say who it is. These relationships are going straight to, straight to hell. I love it when I wake up in the morning and my man boils our tea and we, we do yoga together. Bitch, it's a lie. She just bopped him upside his head for catching him in somebody else's DM. <laughs> Don't trust those couples who expose their marriage and their relationships. They got just as many problems as me and you. It's a lie to sell products. Taking showers together, cleaning her C-section mark, helping her insert her tampon in, <laughs> helping pump the milk out of her breast, helping her take out her 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 birthing diapers. It's it's just it, y'all, they're doing it so you can click and they can get money. Most of these relationships are either going through hell or they're human. They're having their ups and downs. That nigga don't even want to come near her tampon. That shit stank. He don't want to come near it. But because if he does it, they'll get their views will go up to 700,000 views and they'll get a fucking check. They're not sharing because they want to give you a good example. They're sharing because them checks is so motherfucking real. Them, them checks be deep. Them sponsorships be deep. It's about money. I've read enough of these couples. They're lying to y'all. They're lying to y'all. That nigga is tired of taking family trips. That nigga is tired of pranks. That nigga is tired of taking her out to eat every week. He's tired. He just wants to sit down and watch a sports game. But since now they have an image to uphold, the niggas are tired. The husbands just want a husband. They don't want to show you hugs and kisses anymore. Ladies better just raise standards 100 and start checking for character, values, and ambition. Pin that comment. That's all it is. But these husbands, I've gotten, I had a husband who him and his wife are big on YouTube. This nigga cried. And he told me I could share this because y'all won't know who, 
He said, I'm tired of faking it. I cannot stand my wife. I want a divorce. All she cares about is image. We bought matching fucking G wagons. Bitch, I don't want a G wagon. That's the nigga was crying. I he they didn't buy matching G wagons. I kind of changed around the story. So y'all don't know who it is. But he's like, she makes us wear matching outfits and take family pictures. He's like, yo, that's not even me. Have me putting like flowers in front of the door and bubble baths. I don't do that shit. This nigga started to cry. He wants to hang with his niggas, but he has to uphold an image. He just wants to live his life and he can't because his wife is coordinating his underwear in front of cameras. He says he has no privacy and he has to play along because they're getting big checks. This man is crying in the dark. He said... We can't even take a camping trip without having a sponsor or having to show off something and wearing matching outfits. He's like, I'm tired. I don't know Austin. I can never tell y'all who it is, but he's he's at his breaking point. Like he doesn't want to do this no more. He just wants his marriage. But he can't because his wife quit her job. That's her main source of income. He loves his wife, but he doesn't want to be involved in that stuff anymore. Yeah, a sim character. Y'all don't understand. It's called content creation. Y'all, I live in Atlanta. Atlanta has the most content creators next to California, New York, Miami than any other state. You do not mean to, y'all, I'm not, I'm not making this up. They're like, they will be sitting at a bar, sitting at a rest. I've seen it. Because when you go to the hot spots, these people literally live to capture their moments. Nothing is authentic anymore. Like, they literally, they sit the stand down on the table and everything, they're, they're creating content. He can't communicate with his wife because his wife is bringing in big money. Money or your husband? Money! She's not going to listen to him. He makes, he has a job, he works. And his wife wanted him to quit his job. He's not quitting. He's like, nah, man, I need something to myself. Like they had to argue over this. Like he's like, nah. So I put the bitch in a jar. I calmed her ass down. Made her more reasonable because money has gotten into her head. I had to literally do witchcraft on his wife. To calm her down. Oh, yes, I do witchcraft on women. Don't get it twisted. I will, if the wife is wrong, I will hit you up. I'm very fair. I like to hit niggas up. I like to river dance on river, on niggas, especially manosphere niggas. I love to river dance. I love it. But I also love to dance on an intolerant hoe. I'm a mumbo. I'm a voodoo priestess. I'm an equal opportunity hater. I got to. If I'm willing to do it to him, I got to be willing to do it to you. She's doing too much. Just for money. So I had to bring her down. A few notches. Calm it down. And focus on your marriage. Rather than content, content, content. No. When you go out to Atlanta, it's nothing. It's it's exhausting. I don't know how people can live like this 24/7. 24/7. 24/7. They you, you 
You don't know what's real. You don't know what's fake. I had a girl and she watches my YouTube. She approached me and I, I didn't even know who she was, but she has like 300,000 followers on Instagram and like YouTube. She was like, I love how you just come on and off. Like you're not um, a slave to the camera. I said, girl, no. I started this by accident. I'm not even a content creator at this point. I just do as I please and I do magic and I help people. That's about it. I'm not here to sell you a, a glamorized version of what I do. My life is boring, bitch. So ain't nothing really to see until I'm until I have to cuss a nigga out. And that's pretty much it. I'm a voodoo priestess. If you want to bind, bind. I'm not saying it's right, but but for $55, you can bind, bitch. I'm not. <laughs> it ain't my fault you obsessed. <laughs> That's your business. I didn't say to do it, but I got the product. So, y'all, yes, I sell it. Yes. You know why I make I make this stuff to even out the playing field. If a nigga got some gold to dig and he's a fuck nigga and he's really just using you for sex and to talk your and to talk your ears off, use this on his ass, but know when to walk away. Cuz it never ends well. Get the gold and run. Pretty much. Oh, thank you, MCR. Oh, no, girl. I'll be packing orders. The office is actually closed until January 15th. When I'm telling y'all we start packing soon because we've made most of the products, we're going to be packing for the next two, three weeks. It's, 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 it's going to be crazy. Black Friday was epic. I mean, Black Friday, I actually get anxiety thinking about printing out all of, it's giving me anxiety. And I just want to take a moment to, to say thank you. Y'all are that bitch, y'all are that nigga. Or y'all are androgynous. I don't know. He, she, her, whatever pronouns y'all go by. Thank you. It's giving me anxiety. These boxes don't, if, if you come in my office, you will scream. There's I've literally outgrown my space a long time ago, but did yeah. It's a fucking warehouse at this point. It's not even a store. It's a warehouse. So, so thank you so, so, Belle. Yeah, so guys know that we start packing next week. Um, so we'll just be sending them out. We're sending them out. I said six weeks, but it, if it leans a little bit on seven, I apologize. But everybody's stuff is getting out. Where I've I've made some y'all. I have to wear glasses because there's so much dust and stuff. Like it's been crazy. Okay, so I'm not wearing shades because I'm hiding anything. I'm wearing shades because my eyes are dripping from dust and fragrance and essential oils, and I can't take it anymore. So we most definitely will start packing. Um, there's products back here. There's products right here. There's products right there. There's, pro there's no more room. There's literally, I don't have any more room. I'm sorry. And it's, and it's a blessing. But I got packing to do. Some people are like, bitch, you took our money and disappeared. No, I've been making products. Um, I just came to say hello. And thank you. I start doing spell work after January 15th. Um, the New Year's readings have already started, but most of my December is full. But you'll be seeing more dates. I think I still have a few dates for New Year's readings. Um, and then 
January. I, I really come back to life after January 15th. Before then, I'm packing, I'm sending stuff out, doing some readings here or there. But yeah, y'all, I'm busy. Yeah. But y'all, Cardi B tried to turn a whole rat into a poodle. And she realized a rat is not a dog. It is a rat. So <laughs> that's what she had to find out. But I really do wish her healing. I feel sorry because I've done that when I was a little bit younger, trying to help a man, trying to make him better, trying. Oh, yeah. If y'all like what I'm saying, yo, cash at me. Cash at me. Send me a cash at, bitch. Sabri82. If y'all enjoyed it, I think it's pinned to the comments. Cash at me. Cash at me. And that's it. Um, I have to go. Um, I have shit to do because I'm here all day. Um, Y'all, I gotta go. Oh, you know my New Year's reading is coming, y'all. I've been doing that Rocky. <laughs> Preparing. All right, y'all. So I'm out. I got shit. I got like products all over here that, that I have to wrap up and shelf and get ready to ship. All right, y'all. Bye.